We've seen our fair share of controversy in the gaming industry, to put it mildly. People say the wrong things, developers make stupid decisions, video game launches go badly, yada yada yada. Every year, sadly, there's dozens of new stories along those lines. In this feature, we'll be taking a look at 15 such controversies of the last few years and how exactly they went down. Telltale Games Closure Telltale Games have been flying high ever since they released the first season of The Walking Dead in 2012, acquiring major licenses left, right, and center, from Batman and Borderlands to Game of Thrones and Guardians of the Galaxy and so many others. But that reckless purchasing of license was, as it turns out, a huge reason for their heartbreaking downfall. Telltale Games abruptly shut down in 2018 with hundreds of people losing their jobs in the ugliest way possible. For the audience, too, it was a tough pill to swallow. Not only did upcoming games like Stranger Things and The Wolf Among Us Season 2 get cancelled, but the closure happened while The Walking Dead's final season was ongoing. Though at least, thanks to Skybound Games, that managed to get completed. Riot Games Riot Games have been a huge presence, especially in the PC gaming scene, thanks to their perennially popular MOBA League of Legends. But of late, several reports have emerged that have painted a very ugly picture behind the scenes at the developer. Beginning with widespread allegations of gender discrimination and morphing into disputes over their forced arbitration clauses, which has caused employees to strike against the studio, the last few months haven't been especially good for Riot Games. SAG-AFTRA STRIKE The SAG-AFTRA strike affected the industry in many ways. On a macro level, lasting nearly a year, it was the longest strike in the history of the Screen Actors Guild. Owing to failed contract renegotiation terms over better compensation for voice actors and motion capture performers, it led to the union striking against several major publishers in the industry, which resulted in said publishers having to seek alternatives to some pretty big-name actors in their games. Sony's rigid crossplay stance. Crossplay has become a hot topic in the industry of late. Microsoft and Nintendo both openly became proponents of cross platform play, but Sony rigidly stood by their stance that it wasn't something they were going to allow. Several developers, from Chucklefish to Hi Res Studios to Gaijin Entertainment, publicly came out to criticize Sony's practices. After a ton of pushback in the industry and a great deal of demand from consumers, it seems like things are starting to get better. Games like Fortnite, Rocket League, and Dauntless all support full cross-play. Wii U Nintendo are flying high with the Switch right now, higher than they've flown for many years. It's weird to think that just a few years ago, they were at the lowest point they probably have been since their inception. The Wii U is undoubtedly one of their biggest high-profile failures, with the console selling extremely poorly thanks to a combination of many factors. While the console definitely has a strong library in retrospect, in the history books it will always go down as an unequivocal failure. PS Vita But of course, the Wii U isn't the only major failure in terms of platforms over the last few years. Coming off of the back of the PSP, Sony were well positioned to cement themselves as a permanent fixture in the handheld gaming space. What happened with the PS Vita was the exact opposite of that. A complete lack of marketing, weird decisions from Sony such as those proprietary memory cards, and next to no proper support from major third parties or first parties were just a few of the things that contributed to this handheld's untimely death. Diablo Immortal An out-of-season April Fool's joke after many years of silence and next to no major announcements, BlizzCon 2018 seemed like the right time for Diablo to make its big comeback, which it did, only not in the way that you would have expected. With much fanfare and after generating a lot of hype, Blizzard took the stage to announce Diablo Immortal, a free-to-play mobile title. No mention of Diablo 4 or even an expansion of Diablo 3 was made. It wasn't so much the announcement itself that drew the ire of the masses, but the way it was made that angered people. BioWare's Issues We've all discussed countless times how BioWare is no longer what it used to be, and the last few years have been perfectly emblematic of that heartbreaking statement. Mass Effect Andromeda and Anthem were both missteps for the legendary developer, and both games had famously troubled development cycles. The Frostbite engine reared its ugly head to the detriment of both, while a lack of internal leadership, no proper management of the work to be done, and issues arising out of the fact that all of it was being done under EA also contributed to what have been a very bad few years for Bioware. Crunch in the Industry 
Crunch, or working overtime for extended periods to get developments on a game finished, is something that's sadly always existed in our industry, but over the last few years it's really come into the limelight. And sadly, reports of horrible crunch and developers being overworked have arisen out of various big studios of late. From Rockstar with Red Dead Redemption 2, to Bioware with Anthem, to Epic Games with the ongoing success of Fortnite, to NetherRealm Studios with Mortal Kombat 11, stories of borderline inhuman crunch have popped up with alarming frequency. On the other side of the spectrum, there have been a few notable instances of developers refusing to overwork their employees, such as Nintendo with Animal Crossing New Horizons and how they delayed it. Let's hope we see more such stories in the future. Command & Conquer's Comeback You know what they say, be careful what you wish for. Command & Conquer once was, and still is, one of the greatest strategy franchises of all time, a true pioneer of the genre. After having been left dormant for a long stretch, fans have been demanding a comeback for years. At E3 2018, EA announced that comeback, in the form of a free-to-play mobile game that looked and felt nothing like Command & Conquer. A bitter pill to swallow, indeed. Fallout 76 Launch One bad game can ruin your reputation. Bethesda Game Studios' reputation, though far from permanently damaged, is definitely at its lowest point, and it's all thanks to Fallout 76. But it wasn't just because of the fact that the launch was broken, boring, and unplayable. No, there was that ridiculous duffel bag controversy. There were stories of players randomly getting banned for no good reason. And yes, of course, the game itself wasn't very good either. Bethesda have made constant updates and will be introducing new ones, so Fallout 76 isn't quite as broken as it once was, but perhaps this is an experiment that would have been best left untouched. No Man's Sky Launch No Man's Sky promised a great deal back before it launched, and all that it promised was making it sound like it could be truly a groundbreaking experience. What it ended up being at launch was nothing like those promises. Many players found it to be repetitive and dull, not to mention the various missing features that had been promised would be in the game. The backlash against Hello Games was nothing short of vitriolic. Thankfully, the studio stuck by its vision for the title, and with several major updates having turned No Man's Sky into a great game, one that's only bound to get better with future updates. Kojima Konami Split for the longest time, Hideo Kojima was the face of Konami and their most successful franchise. So when the news came out in 2015 that the two were splitting up, and rather acrimoniously, it was nothing short of groundbreaking. Konami's treatment of Kojima was widely criticized, while the fact that the promising Silent Hill reboot would never see the light of day and that PT would be pulled from PSN only made the entire situation that much worse. Star Wars Battlefront 2's Loot Boxes Loot boxes are probably among the top three most hated things in our industry right now, and we owe Star Wars Battlefront 2 for bringing them to the limelight in such a way. Pride and accomplishment be damned, these predatory and unfair practices deserve no place in games, much less when they're serving the function of pay-to-win mechanics like they did in Battlefront 2. Thanks to loot boxes and the crippled progression they required, a perfectly good online experience ended up being tarnished irreparably. Shadow of War's Microtransactions Battlefront 2 wasn't the only major 2017 title to make use of horrendous microtransactions. Middle-Earth Shadow of War was a great sequel in many ways, but its monetization ended up letting it down in many others. Turning the game into a grind, especially in its latter stages, just to enable its aggressive monetization wasn't a very good decision on Warner Bros. part. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.